Today I'm going to show you how to sharpen ball gouges. Now what I've got are two ball gouges that are 3 eighths. One has got the traditional grind, so I'll show you on there. That's the traditional grind on that one there. So if I come over here, there we go. There's your traditional grind on there. This is the 3 eighths ball gouge and that's the one that comes in the set of ball gouges. This is the 3 8 ball gouge and that has got the swept back grind. Now when you buy the ball gouges what you get is a 3 8 for example. There's the ball gouge in the packet and this is the 103650 ball gouge. 3 8 ball gouge. It comes in the pack and you've got I open the packet up a brand new gouge is straight out of the packet. So what you've got is the traditional grind. It's got a wax cover on it. Just came off in my hand there when I opened it up. So it's got a wax cover on there to protect it. There you are. I've put the cover back on and that comes off and there we've got the wax cover. So there's your traditional grind. So that's your traditional grind there. If I put my hand there you should be able to see it. So I'm going to show you first of all how to sharpen the traditional grind and then what I'm going to do is take another new ball gouge here we have a half inch ball gouge I'm actually going to put onto the half inch ball gouge the swept back grind so there again covered in wax take that off carefully and there we have the traditional grind on there. So this has the larger handle with it being the half inch. This one here actually has got the larger handle. I prefer the larger handles. They are bought individually but the handle on the one in the kit on the 3 yet say you can see it's a smaller handle. But that's a nice size for your starter kit for your ball turning kit. So there we are. We've got four gouges. Two brand spanking new gouges and two that I've been using for a while now in the um, demonstrations and the videos that I've done. For those of you who know, don't know me, I'm Andrew Hall and I am a turner from County Durham in England and I've been doing quite a bit of work now with Record over the years. I've been involved with demonstrations with them and I've had the pleasure of going abroad and demonstrating in Austria and Germany and today what I would like to do is show you the way that I sharpen up my ball gouge in the swept back grind. The swept back grind, there's nothing new about it, it's been here for a lot of years and uh, it was, it's probably well otherwise known as the Celtic grind, the Irish grind, David Ellsworth grind, Nick Agar grind, Jimmy Clue's grind. We all have a grind that we particularly like to use but I'll show you how I sharpen my swept back grind and then what I'll do is I'll just demonstrate to you how I use the grind on a piece of material. I've removed the guard or I've folded the guard back that has a, a magnifier in this particular guard just for camera purposes so as you can see the tool more clearly. The white stone is a devil stone or a cleaning stone so what I've done to start with is clean up the surface of the grindstone and true it up with the devil stone. I'm using a jig that's been supplied by a good friend of mine who has a company called Skidby Engineering. It's called the Sharpening Wizard. And we pull the arm out and set it to the angle of the tool. I've marked the traditional ball gouge with a sharpie black marker. And what I'll do is I'll run the wheel in the opposite direction just, just to see that it's got a clean facet and that it goes across the full length of the facet. So I'm taking the gouge over the stone and moving it from side to side so as we don't create a groove in the stone to sharpen it. And there we have a nice sharp traditional ball gouge. I'm using the one-way jig and I protrude the 
tool 75 millimeters beyond the actual jig and I'm setting it up to the angle on both the face and the side of the tool with the swept back grind. I'm switching the machine on and tightening up the cradle and then moving from side to side grinding the tool and to sharpen the tool twice over the wheel on each side should bring the tool back to a lovely sharp swept back ground ball gouge. Nicely sharpened clean facet all the way around and ready for use. The angle at the front is 45 degrees. What I'm going to do is just draw into there a black line on that side and on the other side I'll just draw a curved black line into that side. So then what we can do, we can rest it on the tilting table, the tilting tool rest, start up the stone and if you look at where my hand and my fingers positioned, my hand and fingers positioned there so that when I take the tool up onto the stone, what I'm doing is I'm picking the cut up roughly at the top of the stone and then curving around. You will see when the grind is almost complete that the curve it's got a flat top and you can then profile that flat top using the tool holder to create the, the lovely swept back grind. Using the tool holder and again protruding the tool out of the holder 75 millimeters 3 inches Work on each side of the tool or the cheeks of the tool to start with. Grind away the cheeks until they're almost down to the profile on the top so the profile on the top is almost to a point where it's sharp and then start to transfer the grind all the way around the whole of the tool creating the swept back grind. I'm now just finishing off the grind and what I'll then do is move the actual cradle itself in about 5 millimeters. and what that'll do it'll allow me to put a secondary bevel on the heel of the tool which helps to prevent the dreaded old turner's knock. I've now got the, the first of the tools I'm going to show you the traditional ball gouge this is a 3 years traditional grind held in the cradle or the jig that will allow you to do both your ball gouges, spindle gouges and you'll be able to use it with your spindle roughing gouges. So I'm, it's just a matter of putting it up there on there and the angle when I go around I've got it set to the right angle because this distance from the locking nut there is 75 millimeters. So I'm just going to Back again, and now we've got it nice and sharp, nice clean, full gout sharpened on there. The actual arm itself will need to come out to 100 millimeters. So I'll take the little ruler, and to the center of the bar, we'll need to make it 100 millimeters. To the nut, wind that into there, there we are, 100 millimeters at that point there, lock that into position, lock it with both locking nuts, there we are, double check it's the right length, 100 millimeters. I've got the cradle holder here, which if I show you on there, there's a little black mark right on the center, which I've made it easier for me to be able to see. Slide that along there, onto the bar, until I get to the centre there and when those two black marks are exactly in line because I just transferred it down we should be able to just 
Maybe I'll centre a little bit more, take it to there, that's it. We should be able to reproduce that grind. I've set it to 45mm with that template that I've made with a piece of oak. And then I'll do it dry to start with without it, or I'll do it static to start with. Double check that the angle is right around to there and the angle is correct around here. So you're reproducing the same grind. This stone when it's dressed with the fine side of the stone, dressing stone is 350 and already after just trying it and looking at the edge, the edge is it's very very sharp but this is taking it on the wet stone. Normally I have been the dry stone grinder but this is the first time I've used it and I'm actually beginning to think it'll not be the last because the edge is going to be superb. Round to there, keep it in the cradle, go around, back again, and again you're not losing any, taking any steel off, it's a totally Cool grind, and that's it. There's your tool ground to the swept back grind. Well, that's the tools ground up. We started off with a traditional ground bull gouge like this one, and there is the traditional ground gouge. That's the half inch gouge, and this is the the new range of record gouges made with high speed steel M2. There we've got the swept back grind. And also you can see there's a secondary grind on there. That secondary grind is for preventing turner's knock. What I do, I take the tool and I use the tool holder. This is the tool holder that I used for the presentation. And there's the tool. Out of there, I protrude the tool out of the tool holder 75 millimeters. That distance from there to there is 75 millimeters. So there's the half inch ball gouge with the traditional and the swept back grind. So the swept back grind there, the traditional grind there, and we've got the three eighths as well. There's the three eighths swept back ground, no secondary bevel on there. And this one is swept back ground with a micro bevel on here, the secondary bevel on there. So there, we can take them up here and show you swept back and micro bevel. So what I'll do now is I'll put a piece of timber on the lathe and I'll just show you how they actually work. So I've got a piece of ash in the lathe and the it's just some air dried ash. Yeah. So that's the half inch ball gouge to a swept back grind and I've got the tool locked in my side so that I can just move the tool backwards and forwards across and glide across. I'm standing just to one side I'm running that at around about thousand thumb on there, fingers underneath there and then straight across with the material there. So I'll just just like that, I'll just go over on the camera three, then you can see that we're on camera three. Careful as we go out with the cut. You can if you want to use your traditional ball gouge, whichever you prefer. I'm on the traditional there now. There's the traditional up there, across here. Now we've 
trimmed up that piece of ash, that should be trimmed now. And I need to move the tow rest in just a little bit. There, it's a bit of old gnarly ash. But what I can do, can you see there's a bit of torn grain there? Right, and there's torn grain on the end grain there. What I'll do is I'll just move it in now and I'll show you with the swept back grind how we can improve that cut. And to improve that cut, what I can do, if I go on a camera too, I will hold the tool down on an angle like that. Right down on an angle, and I'm just going to draw the cut, get a very fine shaving, and there we've got a fine shaving like that. We'll go on to three, draw it across, very fine shaving. Put with a long step back line. On there, now have a look, it's quite dry this ash. So that will. Now, can you see how you've improved the cut across there with that shear cut on here? You've took away the torn grain. So then we can go onto the end grain side. I'll just move this back out of the road and then we can bring the two us round here. 6mm below the quill there, below the centre, that's ideal, spin it first by hand, make sure it's not catching, and then we can set that away, so overhand grip like that, don't forget the hole in there, draw cut, Just give it a drop. We'll do it like a road too. And you can rough that out. Roughing that old road too out. circle by now. There's not much left in it. little tiny bit there. And again I'll just swing this round here. I'll clean up that surface there on here and then we can Good as you can on there. I'm going to go over onto the three eighths swept back into there. Three eighths spigot on there, and then we'll just slide it out there, roll it back on down, and there you can insert the foot. Go either way, and you see I'm getting a much, much smoother shaving there. And we'll just have a look and see what that finish is like. There's the shaving on there, it's much finer. That's better, that's got rid of the, the torn grain. Bonny little bit. There's still a little crescent in there, so I still need to take just a little bit more off to get rid of that, but you could, let's say you could use your large swept back grind, you can just bring this down, and you can see you can go with either the large one, the half inch, or you can use your three here, with a nice draw cut on there, I'm going to go on the camera too, let you see the body action on there, low down, lock it inside, Flute almost closed, we're rounded about five to past nine there. So if you think about that's nine o'clock, we're at five past ten o'clock, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock. 
This is the clock that I use to show students. We have the flute in the centre, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, round, 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock. So we're about 5 past 9 on there. Nice clean cut onto here. And a lovely gossamer style shaving. We'll just check, see if we've got rid of that crescent on there. Still just the tiniest bit there, so one more cut. And that should do us. And what I'm doing here is I'm doing a very, very fine cut. It's a very fine shaven and it's a sheer cut. Two locked into my body and just leaning in and out. So that's the crescent gun. Now, on the SC3, on the Optimum Circle, what I'll do is I'll just take a pair of dividers and I'll set those to that Optimum Circle there, which is there. And I'm just going to check, see if that's that's just a little large on the spigot there. So we'll go into camera three. So there, it's just a little large on the spigot. So all I will do is, using the left hand side, I'll scribe that right on the centre. That's it. And then only the left hand side. Make sure you don't catch the right hand side, otherwise it'll come round and it'll hurt your finger. Again, stop it and check it. Yeah, that's exactly the right size for those dividers. Again, I'll go onto the three eights. You'll notice I haven't sanded this and I'm not going to do it either because I want to show you the finish you can get from the tool. Three eights swept back ground. Create a nice, clean, square spigot. And you can do that with the 3 8 gouge. Now the only way that I can improve that is for me to use my 3 8 or 10mm beading parting tool. That's this one here. So I'm going to use that 3 8 10mm beading parting tool. And that will give me a lovely crisp spigot that will be square into there. And that can you see it's a nice crisp, it's like a, it's a dovetail because that's ground to six degrees on here. I'm not going to sand it, there's the finish. You can have a look at the finish around there and see what you think. The only thing I am going to do, because I've just noticed now there's a little bit of that crack that's there, so I'm just going to take that 3 8 swept back ground again and I'll just create a little curve around the edge. Let me get up the speed. Actually I can turn the speed up a bit now because it's in the trail. We're now running at about 1400. Just rounding that into there. Blend it. I love this swept back grind. In fact I love the 3 8 pole gouge. If I didn't have any other tool in me bag it would have to be a 3 8 pole gouge. So right, we'll just turn this round the opposite way and I will pop onto here the SC3 chuck because they've got the larger jaws in. These jaws have the correct size jaws for my hole that I drilled with the sawtooth bit on there. So we'll just change that over. SC3 chuck here, pop that under there, put the chuck in, and that should, all being well, be 3mm there. So when that's closed down on there, the 3mm, you can see that it's actually the optimum circle, so it'll grip perfectly 360 degrees. So then we'll throw up the surface of this platter. And here again, spin it first by hand, make sure it's not catching. Back over onto the, now you could if you want to, you could use your traditional, for example. There with the traditional, we could, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit, let you see a little bit closer to the tool. With the traditional there, thumb on the top, fingers underneath, I can pick the cut up. 
Drive into there. Take the high points off. That's working with the traditional, letting the bevel glide across. There we are. And again, I'll clear the camber. Tip my cut back down, draw cut, lower it down, shear cut, and again we'll round that edge over. Just want to see what the cut's like, see whether it's torn grain. Nope, it's fine. Right there, we'll just round that edge over. See the body movement locked into the side. I'll go into there and move the body around. You can, if you want to, put that way, put the foot up on there. Use the bevel. I'll go back around to here. And we'll just round that into there. Just for the point of the tail. On there, we'll go back on there and go. And then we can see on there. There's a little line on there. I'm not happy with that. I'm going to get rid of that now because if we don't do it now, it'll annoy you I didn't see it there before. There we are. Have a look at that. And you can if you want to just with the wing of the tail just round it like that. There we are. Wing of the tail, and you can come round this way, left hand. That's better. Get the best finish you can get from the tail you can get that you can. And then into here, I'm just going to create a bead. And again, I can do that with the swept background on the three it's pulled out. So I'll just create a bead into there. Okay. A bead into there. Bead into here. Like that. Tidy that up. And then into there, what you can do, I just need to lift that up a little higher. Thumb into there. Into the centre. Create a series of bevels. We'll do just to make life a bit easier. I'm not going to take the tail stock off there. I'm just going to swivel the head. That will make life a little bit easier for me. Loosen that off here. Simply just loosen it off and move that back over there. Bring it down a little bit and I'll just swivel it round to there. That'll do it. And then I've got a little bit more access. We'll use the, we'll go up to, how about the big one again? And there, into there, put the foot up, and now we can just take that round. We could go on to the traditional one. And then we'll go on to the 3 8 
traditional. This is the new one that I just took out of the packet. center out of there. For me I like the swept back to get a nice nice sharp point on here if I pick the cut up, go around, in, down. to the center there and that's it. And that's with the three eighths swept back there. So we've got the little couple of lines there, the only way that we could improve that would be to use the scraper which is in the tool, the bolt in the tool kit, go into there and pick up the cut on there, take that round, get rid of those lines, go into the centre and that's it. And if you want to you can pick up the cut with your Three heads four gouge there. Take a very fine cut off. Into the centre. Pip out the middle. And that's it. I'm not going to sand it up. It was just an exercise to show you the, the use of the tools there. And that's quite a nice clean cut. Take it out of the jaws of the chuck and then what we can do is show it from above. We'll go on the camera three. There we are. That's from above. There now. There's the ash, nice bit of rippled ash. You can see the grain's quite good. There's a little crack in there and actually that would probably fit, fill with a bit of super glow in any case, but there we go. There's a nice little shape platter. Straight from the tool, no sanding, with the new record high speed steel M2 gouges. Have fun making shavings. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that demo, and if you have any other things that you want us to turn or any suggestions or any tools that you want to be shown how to use on the record YouTube channel let me know and I'll be happy to make some little videos just to show you how to make the tools, how to sharpen them, whatever the case may be I'm happy to do so. The best thing to do is just put some comments in the comment box or email record direct and they should be able to sort something out so that we can make little videos and put them on the site. Okay, take care everybody. Bye for now. We'll see you next time.